Well, the insurance industry's um, curiosity about pharmacogenomics is interesting because those of us who talk about policy try to help them understand that they can save a lot of money, which really is their only concern. Um, they deny any fiduciary obligation to their enrollees, but when we talk about saving money, their ears perk up. However, as I pointed out in my lecture, the insurance industry is a little bit uncomfortable after the urine drug testing debacle, we'll call it, whereby there were some labs that did not behave particularly well, that pushed for over-testing, that were fraudulent. Uh, I think Millennium was recently fined $256 million, um, be one example. And accordingly, the um, insurance industry is gun-shy about pharmacogenomics. Furthermore, you know, Medicare, you know, started covering pharmacogenomic testing because they saw that it could reduce adverse events, which are very expensive for Medicare, and then somewhat abruptly stopped paying for almost all pharmacogenomic testing last summer. And the insurance industry, the private insurance industry, certainly tends to follow the lead of the um, people at CMS. So right now, that's all up in the air, and I tried to explain that, that while pharmacogenomics is a wonderful tool and, you know, is going to be picked up by the VA system very heavily, as it's been picked up by National Health Services in Europe, uh, where the National Health Services and the VA own the health of their enrollees for life. Um, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that the uh, private insurance under which the majority of Americans are covered are necessarily going to do it particularly quickly. Well, recently published an article in Pain Practice on research with my Italian colleagues, the Painomics group, with whom I do a lot of publishing. And um, there are numerous concerns. One of the big ones has to do with patient privacy. We have a law that was enacted in the United States in 2009 called GINA, the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act. And while genetic testing information uh, is not allowed to be used by insurers to deny uh, potential enrollees health insurance, it doesn't apply in the United States to, you know, disability insurance, uh, long-term care insurance, and such. So it's a very incomplete law, and my hope is that um, the next administration will do something to put some teeth into GINA and thereby make Americans feel less anxious about undergoing genetic testing and having all their information out there. Well, if these impractically expensive drugs save lives, and they're not impractically expensive, they're just expensive. If lives are going to be saved, if suffering is going to be ameliorated, I think that there's no uh, dollar figure that can be put on their, you know, uh, on the value in, in terms of you know benefit to patients. Um, one of the scary things that I did bring up is that you know we can identify orphan diseases that are genetically mediated, where pharmacogenomic uh, testing and creation of drugs can clearly benefit um, people who suffer from these orphan diseases. But again, there's not going to be much profit motivation for the pharmaceutical industry. And that may stop them from doing so. And I pointed out that the good news is that chronic pain, from which 100 million Americans suffer, is not an orphan disease. Yet, there are many orphan diseases that are indeed painful. And wouldn't it be nice if we could do something with great drugs to keep these diseases, um, uh, the symptoms of these diseases um, from becoming severe and not have to rely upon analgesia?
That's a very good question. I think that at this point, primary care needs to learn a lot about pharmacogenomics. They need to find a lab that is user-friendly because, you know, so many physicians struggle with the reports they get from urine drug testing labs in terms of uh, understanding them. You know, the interpretation is complicated. And certain urine drug testing companies are more user-friendly and, and create um, uh, packaged, um, uh, packaged reports that uh, physicians can understand. They also have 24-hour hotlines. You can find a lot of variance among the companies doing pharmacogenomic testing as well. And, you know, while shopping for a pharmacogenomic testing company, you know, talk to representatives and determine which one is most likely to be user-friendly. Um, you know, I, I work in pharmacogenomics research and have been involved in it for a number of years, and I can't touch the science that doctors Fuden or Dr. Argoff um, discussed yesterday. So I really feel bad for the neophyte in, uh, primary care provider who gets all this information and then says, now what? So it's important to have good dialogue with the pharmacogenomic testing lab personnel and look for sample reports and make sure that if they are too complex that there's someone who will be available to explain the data and what the practical applications may be to them.